there. We have got a story for you today coming out of the book of Numbers, and I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it because there's a lot of good stuff in here. All right. Um, what we have at this point in time is that the Israelites have been wandering in the desert for almost 40 years, and it's almost time for them to move into the promised land that God had promised them. Uh, one of the things you may recall from the time with the spies was that the spies had been going out for 40 days, and because the people would not uh, do what God had said for them to do, and really it's them not believing that God was going to help, help them, then they were going to be stuck in the desert for one year for each day the spies had been out, and that's how you get your 40. So most of the people who had to die before they could move into it have died by this time, and that kind of makes sense because it has been 40 years. And all of the people who fell into that category had started off at the youngest age of 20. So this had included Miriam, Moses' sister, and Aaron, Moses' brother. And Moses had already done something that had angered God, and he was not going to be able to go into the promised land. But at this point, he's still alive. So as they're preparing to move into the promised land, uh, they are pretty close to it, and they are on the move. Now, the people who lived in the promised land and outside of it at this time did not like having the Israelites there, and they saw them as a threat, and they were pretty smart in doing so, because during that 40 years, apparently Israel had grown in numbers quite a bit so that when they got into an open plain, you could see people for as far as you could see. So this kind of scared the people they were going to be coming through. And this one group, I think it was uh, Canaanites from Arad, attacked them and captured some people. And the Israelites said, oh no, we're not having any of that. They prayed to God about that and were supported by God, when they went in, they wiped out Arad. Then they turned and said to the Ammonites, okay, we'd like to pass through your land, and we won't, we won't touch any of your vineyards. We won't even drink the water there. We just want to go down the road. And the Ammonites said, no, you can't come through here. And they pulled out their army and attacked Israel. They got beaten up. They got wiped out. And then there was this uh, king named Og, and he drew out his army and attacked Israel. He gets wiped out. Well, there's a king named Balak, who's the head of the Moabites, and he sees what's been happening. Okay, uh, the Israelites are 3-0 and o in fighting people. It's not like before when they had sometimes attacked and gotten beaten because they weren't following God. It seems that as the, at this point, the Israelites had finally gotten word that, hey, we need to do what God says if we're going to be successful. Well, uh, Moab may or may not have been next on the list, but Balak at least thinks that they're going to come after him. So he sends off to a faraway country for this guy named Balaam. And in sending off, he sends uh, some of his officials to go up there and they have a fee and they would actually like Balaam to come back with them because Balaam is what is known as a seer. Uh, sometimes people call it, call it seer, but it's really someone who can see a seer. And Think of a prophet, and you're pretty close to having that kind of individual. Now, of course, at that time, people believed in lots of different gods, and a lot of them didn't even know about the real God. It appears that this Balaam guy knew the real God, and uh, there's not a whole lot written about what he did or what 
services he performed, but apparently one of the things that they thought he could do would be to lay a curse on people. Now, we talk about a curse in our time. That means saying bad words. But in that time, they didn't have that kind of language. What they had instead was where somebody would say something that they hoped would happen to someone else, and it would be a bad thing. It's It would be like, um, may your crops fail and you die from starvation. Okay, that would be a curse. Uh, may all of your animals become sick. That would be a curse. And in most cases, someone could say it, but it didn't really have any effect. And people had the idea that if Balaam said something like that, then whatever he said would happen. So uh, he must have been able to do something because people uh, believed that he could and would go to him. Well, they get to him and he tells them, okay, stay overnight. And he goes and talks to God and God says, don't go with them. I'm blessing these people that they want you to curse. So you stay here. So in the morning, uh, Balaam says, can't go. Uh, God says not to. Now he doesn't tell him that the Israelites are a blessed people. As far as um, Balak's people, the Moabites think, they think it's just a group that came out of Egypt. That's, that's the way they refer to them. They don't know really anything about them except they're kind of on their doorstep waiting to get in. Well, they go back to their king. He sends more important officials and promises even more money to Balaam if he will come there and lay a curse on them. Now, this is where something starts happening, and if we're not careful, we're going to overlook it. Balaam has been told by God, these are blessed people, don't go with them. But apparently he wants to go, and a lot of people think that it was the money he was looking for. So, he wants to go. He goes back and talks to God, and God says, okay, you can go with them, but you cannot uh, lay a curse on my people. Okay, now here's what I think happened based on what's about to happen is that it's kind of like with a mom or a dad and they say, you need to clean your room or you're in trouble and you don't want to do it. You want to go and play with a friend and you've asked them one time and they said, no, clean your room. Next time they might say, all right, you can go there if you want to. And by the tone of voice, you realize that, you know, they're saying I can go, and I can go, but if I do, I'm going to get whatever punishment I was going to get for not doing what I'm supposed to, not what I was told to do. So Balaam takes advantage of that, and he decides he's going to go. And he has a jenny, that's a, a female donkey, and he loads up next morning, and he starts riding off with them. Well, Remember, this guy's supposed to be a seer so that he can see all these things that nobody else can. But there's something he doesn't see right in front of him. As they're moving along, his Jenny sees that there is an angel with a drawn sword in the pathway. And so the Jenny goes off into a field off the road and Balaam gets his stick and he starts smacking the donkey to get back on the road. Well, then they get back on the road. They go for a little while. And then the Jenny sees the angel again in front of them. Well, this time there's a wall to the side. And, and so the Jenny's trying to move over and get off the road. But there's a wall in the way and it, it, it mashes Balaam's foot against the wall. And he starts smacking the donkey again. So that's telling us already that Balaam is not really a, as good a guy as we would like to think, even though he's able to talk to God. Well, they go a little way more, and the Jenny sees the angel again. 
Well, now there's a wall on each side of the road, and it's so close in, the genie can't go around to avoid the angel. And so the genie just lies down. Well, he's there smacking the donkey, and then suddenly the donkey turns around and says to him, why are you beating me? Now, we would be shocked because do donkeys talk? No. Now, the scripture tells us that God opened the mouth of the donkey because donkeys don't talk. So God's doing this. Now, here's the funnier part about it is that the donkey has said, why are you beating me? And Balaam gets in an argument with the donkey. Oh, because you're, you know, you're doing all this and that. And so if I had a sword, I would kill you. The donkey says again, have I ever done anything like this before? And Balaam's going, no. He's arguing with a donkey instead of going, wait a second, donkeys don't talk. This must be God talking to them. Well, suddenly the angel opens Balaam's eyes and he sees the angel with the sword. And the angel says, you know, if your donkey had not stopped, I would have killed you. It's like, okay, wait, did Balaam have permission to go? Well, kind of, sort of, but he wasn't supposed to. Well, to get on through with things, uh, you know, Balaam seems to have learned his lesson and he's allowed to go on with uh, Balak's people. And he goes in and Balak shows him all these Israelites from one point of view. Of course, there's so many of them, they can't see them all. And they do these sacrifices and Balaam gets the word from God. No, these people are mine. You bless them. Here's the message for you to tell. And instead of pronouncing a curse, Balaam goes to Balak and he pronounces a blessing on the Israelites and Balak is like, why are you doing this? You're supposed to curse them, not bless them. Well, this happens two more times. And finally, Balak is fed up because, okay, I'm not paying you anything because you didn't do what I wanted you to do. Well, you know, Balaam at this point says, you know, I told you I can only do what God tells me to do. It's like Balak couldn't get it through his thick skull that um, you can't make God do something. Well, in all of this, the Moabites are going to get whipped up. Now, they're, they're not going to be completely wiped out, um, but they're going to have some bad times. And uh, Balaam, you would think at this point, he's going to go on home. He pronounces a couple other blessings on the Israelites, but he ends up advising Balak and how to mess with the Israelites and cause them problems. And that works to some extent. It doesn't stop the Israelites, but it does cause trouble. Well, eventually Balaam is going to be killed for what he did. You see, even though he knew God, he didn't follow God. That is the most important thing. He ends up being punished because apparently he thought just because God would talk to him that he was okay with God. What he needed to realize is that you do what God says and you try the best you can to follow what he said and not so much what you would prefer to do. And that's a hard lesson for a lot of people to learn. Okay, with that, I'm going to close out this story. Now, you may have noticed from my tie up here, and I've got it down here, is there are eyes on my tie. And that's to remind us that Balaam was a seer. He could see things. But when it counted, he could not see the most important thing. All right, I'll let you go, and I hope you'll be back next time. Bye.